Hello, welcome to Exploder Screencasts. Uh, today, I'd like to go over some of the basics uh, for making games, just really sort of the fundamentals uh, of making some simple objects. Some of the things that are uh, already made for you in the prefab. I'd like to show you how they're made so that if you wanted to make your own, you can go ahead and do that instead of using the pre-made things. Let's get started. First uh, prefab here is the player. And if we drag that onto the stage, uh, we can see we've got basically what is a, just a box or a not a rectangle, but a square, uh, which was made with the draw tool. So let's go ahead and do that, just like we have the player here. And I'll make them a little bigger so we can tell the difference. Um, now we have a box, just like this, and you can see there's some arrows on here, uh, blue arrows. What those are are uh, control modifiers. If we go to the controls panel over here, uh, we can see that there's a bunch of uh, selections that we can choose from. All of these are controls that uh, you can use when you're playing your game, for instance, using the mouse or using the keyboard. Uh, basically, just uh, user controls. There's nothing automatic here. They all respond to either keyboard or mouse. Uh, and you can see that there's three arrows here. Actually, uh, if I click on these things, you can see these two are just one thing. Uh, and there's some selections here, uh, which we'll go over later. Uh, and then there's the one that goes up. Uh, the one that goes up is the uh, jumper, and let's go ahead and drag that onto our object here. So now uh, let's do a quick test and see what we've got so far. Really quickly, this is over here is our prefab, and this over here is the thing that we just made. And we can see that we can, by hitting the arrow keys, still move the other guy, uh, but I only put a jumper on this one. So if I push the up arrow, they both jump because this one has a jumper too. Now, now we've got a jumper on both. Now let's add this uh, this modifier right here, uh, which is a slider. And that's uh, what this one over here is. And you can actually choose and customize uh, how you want to operate it. So for instance, if you uh, by default, it'll use either the left and right uh, or the A and D keys, actually both at the same time. So uh, whoever uh, is your player, if they have a preference using the, the WASD or the uh, arrow keys on the keyboard, whether they're right or left-handed, they don't have to make a choice, they can use either. Uh, now, uh, you can actually change that to only use one if you wanted to, for instance, make a uh, co-op game or a two-player game where you have uh, you were, uh, and a friend of yours over at your house and you wanted to play together, you can use two parts of the keyboard. Uh, now, let's do the quick test now that we have the same controls on both. You can see they move uh, roughly exactly the roughly the same way, uh, and uh, now they're pretty much the same. The only difference being is the fact that this one looks different. So let's make uh, this one look like this player. Uh, what I did was quickly uh, switched over to the paint mode. You can see over here uh, when we start making objects, this is the drawing mode where we see everything sort of as a blueprint. Uh, and then we have the selection modes, and finally the paint mode, which changes the look and feel of everything so we can see exactly how it looks in the game. For instance, if I click test, boom, it looks exactly the same and starts the game, uh, and you almost can't see the transition. So uh, I'm gonna click on my new uh, player here, and I'm gonna change the way he looks to match the one that's over here, so at least roughly. Uh, so we'll choose uh, a fill color, which is this first dialog here, or first menu, I should say. And we'll choose a purple color. And uh, the next one is the outline. And we'll choose a darker purple. Uh, I didn't hit it exactly, but close enough. Uh, and then the final one here is the texture. So I could choose among many different kinds of textures here. And I'll choose a slightly different one. Um, now we have uh, a player for the game. So click test. Now we actually have two players, one which is the prefab on the left and the one we just made on the right. So it's pretty much as simple as that. Uh, some uh, other things I wanted to show you about the player that I've done in the prefab. Uh, over here, uh, we have two additional buttons right here. Um, click on the first one and it'll show us our layers. Uh, for the object. The layers basically, uh, there's three different kinds. There's collision layers, which uh, 
right here it says objects on the same layers will collide with each other. So if I put this on all layers, basically it'll collide with anything in the game that's on any collision layer. And there's another option here for uh, pass-through layers. If I put this guy on a pass-through layer A, anything that's also on pass-through layer A will just basically pass through. They won't collide with each other. And then the final layer here is sensor layers. Um, anything that's on a selected layer, when it touches each other, will fire a sensor event. Uh, if, if two things on the same sensor layer touch each other, they will fire a sensor event for both objects. So, uh, if you're asking yourself, what's a sensor event? Uh, let's go look at this next button right here. Uh, this is the object actions dialog. Basically what I can do is I can assign an action, which is a game, of, a game uh, ev event, I shouldn't say event, uh, something that happens in the game that I want to assign to uh, an event that happens to the object. So uh, basically if you take the word event, you say if this happens, and then you take the word action and you replace that with then do this, then you'll have a better understanding. So uh, if sensor event happens on sensor here, I want to, for instance, uh, lose a life or something like that. Uh, basically, I can assign events to actions. So uh, in this case, though, I haven't, uh, by default, as you can see, assigned anything to the prefab because all of the actions are actually applied to the other objects in the game, which I will show uh, very soon. So uh, that's very simply how to create a player in your game. Uh, next up I'm going to show you how to create other objects and have them interact with the player. Thanks.